Hello and welcome to the quick start guide to game ready levels. We will start by going over the installation process to get this level into your project. The minimum Unity version required is 2020.30. You can use any version above this. And the supported render pipeline is built in. URP and HDRP versions will be coming soon. So be sure to check back with us on Canopy. Let's start by importing all of the package dependencies for this level. It is recommended to install the packages in a specified order to avoid warnings or breaking prefab connections to the game ready level. Note, if you already have these packages installed, you do not need to reinstall them. Just be sure you're using the latest versions of the packages. The first package we need is the Polygon Fantasy Kingdom pack by Synthi Studios. Next, you will need to install Gaia Pro, Gina Pro, and our Fantasy Kingdom content pack. Now that we have the dependencies installed, you can go ahead and install the game ready level package. Unpack the zip file and import the Unity package provided into your project. Now that we have the content imported, let's go over the project structure. In the game ready levels folder, you will find three folders, content resources, scenes and scripts. The content resources contains custom resources like post effects, materials and prefabs that are designed and used in the level. The scenes folder contains all of the game ready level scene files. And lastly, the scripts folder contains custom helpful scripts that are used in the levels. In the game ready levels, you'll notice that there are three scenes. Let's go over each of the scenes. To get to the scene, let's go to the scenes folder. And since we're using the Fantasy Kingdom, we're going to go to FK Scenes, GRL01, and GRL stands for Game Ready Level. And in here, you'll see these three scene files. Let's open up the scene 01. Okay, now that we've got the Game Ready Level scene 01 open, you'll notice in the hierarchy, there are three things. We have the Gaia runtime, which consists of all of the Gaia necessities, such as lighting, the player, the water, the flora. And of course, I've added an occlusion area, so we can bake occlusion. Next, we have the environment, which contains the source terrain used in this scene. Under here, you also notice that the flora component is added to here and has been set up. We also have a Gina spawns, which is where all of the Gina content is placed in this scene. We have bridges where I have added four bridges that go over the rivers or the ocean. We have seabed, which is a plane that goes under the world to create a seabed effect. As you can see here, here's where the terrain ends and here's where the seabed begins. Next, we have our terrain reflection probes. So these are all of our reflection probes in our scene. We have our light probes, which you can see here is our light probe groups. We have our background mountains. Uh, we have a little dock, which is over here. This is a custom prefab that I made. And we have our baked rivers and our baked roads. You'll notice that the Gina splines and the Gina rivers splines are not present in the scene. Those will be in the source scene and we'll go over those in a minute. This scene is in a state where you can use it, you can develop in it, and you can also release in this scene. Next, we're going to look at the optimized scene. So let's load up the optimized scene. Okay, now that we're in the optimized scene, you'll notice that the hierarchy is very similar, except a few minor details. So you'll notice in here, there is a Gaia terrain export, and this contains the mesh terrain, which has been exported to a low poly style from the Gaia manager. And also the source terrain is here, but you'll also notice that the draw height has been turned off because we just want to use it to draw the vegetation. Under here, you'll notice that the genus spawns have been turned off, but everything else is still the same. 
and the reason why the genus spawns have been turned off because all that's under genus spawns has now been baked into this optimized mesh using the PW toolbox. Here you can see it's broken down into small objects, medium and large objects using our layer system. So our layer culling can take effect and improve the performance. This scene is an optimized version of the first scene that we saw and is ready for release, but it's very difficult to make edits and changes to this, considering the terrain is a mesh terrain and all of the models and meshes are baked in two groups. Okay, so now let's go into the source scene and let's go over how we can make changes and how you can bake all of the stuff ready for release. Let's open up the source scene. Okay, now we have the source scene open. You'll notice the hierarchy has a few other things. You'll notice that the Gaia tools is in here. So this will be the session manager and the biome used over the top. Of course, all of the locations and prefabs and everything were all spawned in uh, via Gina. We also have the Gaia runtime, which contains all of the same um, parents underneath. And we also have Gina. And here it contains all of the splines that have been used um, in this. So you'll notice that these splines don't really have anything. These were just used to spawn like the bricks down, the lampposts, and also do a bit of texture painting. Uh, but you can see here we have the roads. So here's the road spline. So if you do make some terrain edits, you can modify the spline um, to fit around those edits. And also we have the river spline. Again, if you make edits around the river areas, you can uh, adjust this spline and configure it. And then we have the guide terrain, which is also renamed in the other scenes as environment. And under here, we still have uh, the terrain and all of the same parrots underneath. But you'll notice that these also have single objects, which can be deleted, modified, and moved around. The Scenes 01 also has this, where you can move the objects and delete objects, but it doesn't contain the genus spline sources inside. So let's do an example now where we actually want to make changes and how we go about that. So the first thing you want to do is you want to go to File, Save As, and you want to save this scene. So I'm just going to call this My New Scene. And I'm going to save this. The reason why we're saving the scene as a new file and not just uh, saving this is because we don't want to compromise the source of the scene in case we want to go back. Okay, so now that we have saved our scene, now we're in the scene that I've saved, I can make edits and changes. So say if I didn't want this rock here or this rock here or something. So let's say that those are my edits and bear in mind that if you make edits to the terrain, given that this is the source terrain data, um, it will also make changes to any other scene that is using this source terrain. So if I add some little trees here, these trees will also appear inside the scene 01. And this will also appear in the optimized scene because the optimized scene is using the vegetation. Whereas if I painted this or raised it or lowered it, it would only appear in scene 01 because the optimized scene has a baked mesh tree. Okay, so now that I have made my changes, how do I bake this out and make it into a scene that's ready to be used? <clears throat> well, the first thing we can do is if we don't need the tools anymore, we can get rid of those. Next, with the splines, we want to make sure that we bake out the appropriate splines. So the only two splines you'll need to do is the roads and rivers. So I'll select the roads. I'll make sure I have the road extension selected and I'll bake. Next, I'll go to the river, select rivers and I'll bake. Now that there is a bake, as you can see now, these are actual meshes. Now you can delete the, the whole Gina uh, root item or root transform if you don't ever want to go back to these splines again. But if you're still in development and unsure, I recommend you leave this in here for the time being. Next, we want to go to the terrain. So 
Now we need to bake out our terrain. So let's go to Window, Procedural Worlds, Gaia, and show Gaia Manager. Then we want to go to the Advanced tab, Tools, and we want to go to Terrain Mesh Explorer. Now that we've got this open, what we want to do is we want to go to the drop down at Export Presets, and we want to go Convert to Low Poly, and start the export. Okay, now that it's exported, you'll notice that a lot of things have disappeared. Do not be concerned about this, we just need to disable and turn on a few things. So now that we've got our mesh export here, of course the one thing we don't want is the converter trees. Unless you want to keep the trees as prefabs, you can do that. But for this example, we're not going to. So I'm just going to delete those. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to enable the terrain again, which will bring everything back. And one thing we need to do, as you can see here, both the mesh terrain and the source terrain are fighting with each other. So we're just going to go to the settings of the terrain and turn off the draw height. And that's how you get the mesh terrain to work with the scene. Okay, now that we have baked our terrain and enabled and disabled everything that is required, we can now move on to baking our meshes. Note that this op is optional and it's not required. But in the purpose of this, we're going to go over it and show you how it's done. So first we're going to go to a window. Procedure Worlds, Toolbox, Main Window. Then we're going to go to Combine Meshes. You'll notice that it's, I was saying I have used this before, so I'm saying I'm missing. So I'm just going to get rid of that missing. Now in the Optimize scene, down here, I'm only combining one root object. So if we go under the terrain, and Gina spawns, we'll drag and drop this into the drag and drop game objects. And here you can see we've got a bunch of combine commands. In here you can see these are the small objects. I'm going to merge my colliders, uh, a uint 16 format, lot size multiplier of 1, but my cell size is just going to be 4. And then the object scale range is going to be 0 to 2. And then with the medium, the cell size is 16, and the object size is 4, 2 to 4. With the large, we're at 32 cell size and an object size range of 4 to 64. And then the extra large is 64 to 10,000 with a cell size of 1024. And as you can see in the scene view, when I have these selected, it's showing um, some bounds. Uh, whereas in the large objects, it's not showing any because none are exceeding this. So once we have set up all those settings, we can just go down and click Combine Meshes. Okay, now that that's done, we can now close the PW tools. And notice now we've got this optimized object here in our hierarchy. But you also know that the genus spawns are still enabled, so what we need to do is turn this off so it doesn't double render. Inside the optimize, you'll now see that we've got the small, medium, and large. And of course, if we had any extra large objects, they will also appear in here. Now inside of Gaia, we have these three layers that are used for object culling. So with the small objects, I'm going to set this to PW object small. Yes. PW object medium for the medium size. And for the large ones, I'm going to set PW object large. And to see how this is affecting performance or how it works, you can go inside the Gaia runtime, Gaia player, and play a culling settings. Note that a value of zero will be infinity and it will not be cold. Whereas if I see the, the large object, if I set this to one, you'll notice all of the large objects disappear. And as I start coming in, they'll start reappearing. <clears throat> this is for object culling. We also have shadow culling. So if I put the large objects to one, you'll notice all of the shadows for the large objects disappear until I come close to them inside the view range. This is a very good way of optimizing the performance and really does help, especially when working with large scenes. And that is how you use the source version of the scene. Now that I have optimized and combined everything, you'll notice now that we're at the same state as the optimized scene. But we obviously have a few more things in here. We can also rename all this. So if we want to rename this, we can rename the guide's brain to environment. We can put our optimized under there. 
we can get rid of Gaia tools. We can put our terrain export under there. And for the purpose of this, I'm going to get rid of Gina. And now we're at the same state as the other two scenes, whereas we have optimized the terrain and combined the meshes. Okay, and lastly, we're going to go over just baking the light in and the occlusion culling. Now in this scene, since we baked everything and combined everything, you will need to use the optimized light settings. So if you go to Window, Rendering, Lighting, you'll notice that currently it's using the GRL01 light data. If we click that, it'll show where it is. But since we baked everything, we need to use the optimized light data, which has some other settings that's more suited to the baked geometry. Once we have that in there, you can click Generate Lighting. Now note that this lighting is baked indirect, so it will be static. Lastly, we need to bake occlusion culling. As you'll notice when I click occlusion, you'll notice that I have already baked occlusion culling for this scene. So if you go to the bake settings, you'll notice that we have um, these pretty much as default, except for the back face threshold, we want to set this to 25. And then click bake. Okay, and that's it now. The level is ready to be used. Thank you for watching. If you wish to learn more, head over to Canopy, Library, Content Packs, and Game Ready Level 1 Fantasy Kingdom to learn more. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more content.